Dispatch News starts now. We're about to get some much needed rain and some of the storms could be severe. This is KOAM News at 5. I'm Dow Quick. Let's go straight to Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty. Yeah, we have a new tornado watch out uh, for a good chunk of the region, Kansas and also Missouri. I do expect all of us to be under some form of a watch as we go through the evening hours. Elevated risk for severe weather really from I-49 west and still a risk for severe weather east of I-49 just a little bit lower. Look at our new tornado watch out across Kansas and then along that I-44 corridor. These will extend farther south and to the east as we go through the overnight hours. Not too much going on. We've had a few little random showers, but all the action is out along the I-35 corridor. So still a couple hours away until it starts to move into our western county. So we're fine next couple hours, but here's 7 p.m. getting into Yates Center and then driving east quickly by 8.30. We already have storms popping up. Pittsburgh, Columbus over to Joplin, the main line right behind it. A lot to talk about. We're going to break it all down for you here in a bit. See you soon. In-person early voting is officially underway in Oklahoma. Now all four states in the area are open for early voting. According to the Oklahoma State Election Board, more than 167,000 people participated in early voting for the 2020 presidential election. Ottawa County election officials say they expect to see high turnout again this year. Long lines have already formed at some early voting locations. So officials encourage voters to be prepared with a valid ID before they come to cast their ballots. Definitely bring your ID. It needs to be an Oklahoma state issued or federally issued ID. Um, it does need to be current, not expired. And be patient, you're gonna wait in line. Early voting in Oklahoma will continue daily until Saturday at 2 p.m. You do not have to pre-register to participate. Former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris are out in full force hitting battleground states that will determine the winner of the presidential election. Natalie Brand has more information from Bucks County, Pennsylvania, one of the swing counties in the largest battleground state up for grabs. Former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris both started the day in North Carolina, holding dueling rallies within 60 miles of each other. Raleigh, are we ready to do this? Well, thank you very much, North Carolina. You are a special group of people. In Rocky Mount, Trump attacked Harris, targeting President Biden for seeming to call Trump supporters garbage. My response to Joe and Kamala is very simple. You can't lead America if you don't love Americans. You just go. Uh... The White House says President Biden was referring to the comedian who made racist jokes at Trump's Madison Square Garden rally. Harris told reporters she disagreed with any criticism of people based on who they vote for and during her rally in Raleigh argued it is Trump who hates his opponents. Unlike Donald Trump, I don't believe people who disagree with me are the enemy. He wants to put them in jail. I'll give them a seat at the table. Both Harris and Trump will also campaign in Wisconsin tonight, with Harris first making a stop in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Polling shows the Keystone State a virtual tie, the biggest electoral prize of all the battlegrounds. We are in Bucks County, a key swing area outside Philadelphia where voters are divided. I believe in her policies versus her candidate, which is not my choice. I like the fact that when he was president, he stood behind the stuff he promised to do and he did. He made an attempt to do it. The Trump campaign today said it's suing Bucks County, alleging voters were turned away Tuesday after facing long lines on the last day to apply for mail-in ballot voting. Yes, we were told it was a long line, a long wait. So they asked us to fill out a form to do a mail-in ballot. So, But we had to come back today between 1 and 5, which might not work for everyone. So. A Pennsylvania judge ruled to extend the deadline to Friday. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Bucks County, Pennsylvania. More than one and a half million people have voted early in Pennsylvania, joining more than 56 million who have voted early nationwide. U.S. Representative Jake Letourneau arrived in his hometown of Galena, Kansas to host Salute to Service. The event recognized the work of the Kansas National Guard. A Black Hawk helicopter from Kansas Army National Guard landed on the Galena High School football field, giving students a chance to meet the pilot and get a tour of the helicopter. 
This is the first Salute to Service event at Galena High School in more than 25 years. But our military men and women are the ultimate heroes in our lives, in our country. Uh, they're, they're what we should strive to be every single day. It's the most selfless act anybody could do. Recruiters also attended the event, giving students a chance to learn about career options with the National Guard. As the holiday season approaches, food banks in our area are asking for more donations. Both Seneca Food Pantry and Feeding Incorporated in Carthage say obtaining specific needs such as meat can be difficult. However, a Missouri initiative called Share the Harvest provides an opportunity for hunters to donate their deer to help food banks with their shortages. We're going to have more on that for you tonight at 6. Still ahead, the new numbers on the state of our economy. Consumers are spending and the economy is growing. I'm Danya Backus with a look at the Commerce Department's new economic report. But first, a less invasive treatment for breast cancer. That's topping today's Health Watch. This Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we're highlighting an important and less invasive treatment option called proton therapy. Reporter Jenna DeAngelis has more. Sitting down with Janice Shaheen, it's clear she has a big heart, filled with immense love for her family and passion for her job as a patient escort in a nursing home. When you have someone with you that helps you um, through the journey, it, it really matters. It's what's helped her through her own journey. In June 2023, she was diagnosed with breast cancer, which spread to her lymph nodes. I started thinking so fast that, you know, um, What's going to happen with my little one? I have to be strong. Hi, Janet. Her doctor, Montefiore Einstein Comprehensive Cancer Center radiation oncologist Jana Fox suggested proton therapy as a treatment option since the cancer was in her left breast. Our top priority when we're treating a woman who has a left-sided breast cancer is keeping the radiation dose off the heart. Proton therapy makes that possible. Compared to traditional radiation, proton therapy more precisely targets tumors, minimizing damage to surrounding organs and tissue. On average, more than 100 patients are treated here at the Proton Center each day. While Dr. Fox says it's not necessarily appropriate for every patient, it's also used to fight other forms of cancer. We do tend to use proton therapy on children who need radiation um, and on patients who've had radiation before and need radiation again and it's more dangerous the second time. Don't be scared. It's okay to cry. Afterwards, you pick up yourself, you stand up, and you continue your battle. I call it a spa treatment. Janice jokes the warm and welcoming atmosphere made it easier to complete her treatments. That and hope. Jenna DeAngelis, CBS News. New York Proton Center is the only place in New York to receive this treatment. Doctors say they see patients from all around the world. People who work out only on the weekends are helping lower their risk of cognitive decline and dementia. The British Journal of Sports Medicine found weekend warriors, or people who exercise just once or twice a week, got a significant benefit for this brain health. The uh, findings underscore that just a little exercise can go a long way. And that is a look at today's health news. A little bit later, our pet vet on call. Hi, I'm Dr. Eva Dudek from Parsons Pet Hospital. Coming up, I'm going to tell you which candy is safe for your dog for Halloween. Plus, we're going to break down your severe threat for this evening. Coming up next. Well, of course, another warm and very windy day for us today. Winds gusting again, 40 upwards to 50 miles per hour. This is our third day in a row, so we've had extremely windy conditions over the past couple days. Looks okay right now. Nice shot of our Indigo Sky Casino and Resort. Indigo is just outside of Seneca, Missouri. A lot of clouds out there. We do have our elevated severe threat really from I-49 points west as we go through the overnight hours tonight. A little bit lower once you get into the yellow in our far eastern counties. We do have a tornado watch out till 10 p.m. So Kansas and then along that I-49 corridor, I do expect something to pop up northeastern Oklahoma and then eventually the rest of southwestern Missouri, but most likely not for a couple more hours. Most of us right now look fine. We've had a few spotty little showers, but all the big storms have been to the west. So we still have a couple more hours before they start to get into our western counties. Now, these are moving very quickly, but they're also being undercut 
by the cold front. So that's why we're seeing more severe weather down in north central parts of Oklahoma. Not as much in Kansas because that cold air is rushing in underneath those storms. We'll have to see if these can get ahead of the cold front over the next couple hours as our atmosphere destabilizes. We're actually pretty stable right now, but as these storms get into southeastern Kansas, we'll get a little bit more unstable. Low level jet will pick up, so we have a lot to watch as these should intensify as they work in. Right now, they're just strong storms, but you can see these track all the way back. Uh, Winfield, Arkansas City, and then Ponca City back to the northwest of Oklahoma City. All right, so let's look at timing here. By 7 p.m., getting into Yates Center, Neotiche, Fredonia. At this point in time, these storms should start to strengthen and really start to beef up a little bit. Iola, Chanute, Parsons. We want to watch this stuff ahead of it because if these could get going, those will most likely be severe. Main threat is going to be gusty winds and large hail. We do have at least a low to elevated tornado threat, a few spin ups within this line as it pushes east. So here's 9 p.m. Let's continue east into the metro by 10 or 11 p.m. So then once the leading edge of the line pushes through, then severe threat will drop, especially with that front being right where that leading edge is. Storms continue to drive south and east. Here's about midnight, severe threat still, Mount Vernon to Anderson, and then out as we get to about two or three o'clock in the morning. Thankfully, uh, everybody's gonna get some rain during the overnight hours. How much rain could you get? I think on average, most of us will see one to two inches of rain, which is great. We greatly need it across the region. The winds will calm down a bit for us tomorrow as they switch out of the northwest and actually Halloween will shape up to be a pretty good day once we get these storms out of here. We're going to start the day with some clouds, but eventually by the afternoon, plenty of sunshine and temperatures into the mid 60s as we go into Halloween. In fact, I'll stop this at 7.30 p.m. We drop back through the 50s. So for trick-or-treating, it looks fantastic. All right, 64 tomorrow, 73 Friday, 66 on Saturday. Clocks drop back one hour Saturday night. Heavy rains through the weekend, so uh, more rain to kind of put a dent in that drought this weekend. I know you'll be bringing us update online and through the app and however, and however often necessary. You got it. Thanks, Doug. Hey, think you're seeing ghosts? If your sighting was captured on a Ring camera, the folks at Ring are asking you to send it to them. The camera security company is running a contest called Ring's Great Ghost Search. One winner gets $100,000. Since announcing the contest, Ring has received nearly 4,000 customer videos catching what appear to be ghosts on camera. Each of these videos shows footage exactly as it was captured as customers are unable to edit clips within the Ring app. The new statistics on the state of our nation's economy. Up Topping today's Consumer Watch, the economy is growing, consumers are spending, and inflation is cooling. That's according to a new economic report from the Commerce Department. CBS's Jill Schlesinger explains it's one of three crucial reports out this week leading up to Election Day. The economy is the number one issue for voters in recent polls. The most common concern, higher prices. When we get yeah, the final bill, it's like sometimes yeah. it's a sticker shock. Inflation is uh, <laughs> it's getting the best of a lot of us. But new data from the U.S. Commerce Department finds what consumers are feeling has not impacted how they're spending. The economy grew 2.8 percent over the summer, thanks in large part to Americans opening up their wallets. And what's funny about that is you think about every single poll that says, I feel lousy about prices and the economy. And yet, in this report, we learned that consumers spent at an annualized pace of 3.7%. CBS News business analyst Jill Schlesinger says robust consumer spending, despite higher prices, is likely what has kept the U.S. out of a recession. It looks like we're getting this so-called soft landing. High inflation met with higher interest rates without causing the economy to crater. The report also found more signs of cooling inflation. September data on inflation and spending drops Thursday, then Friday, October data on wages and employment. Employers are expected to have hired 120,000 workers. But recent hurricanes in the East Coast port strike might drag those numbers down. The Federal Reserve will consider all of it when it meets next week. Economists expect they'll cut interest rates a quarter of a percentage point and may do it again in December. Donya Backus, CBS News. 
There are heightened concerns about food safety after a series of recalls linked to harmful bacterial contaminations. It started with a massive recall of boar's head deli meat, which revealed serious violations of health and safety regulations in one of its plants. Since then, there's been several other notable products recalled due to listeria or E. coli contaminations, such as Costco's salmon, uh, certain frozen waffles, and McDonald's quarter pounders. Health experts say foods that aren't processed or heated, like the onions likely at fault at McDonald's, come with some risk. Uh, if the product is going to be cooked, then uh, any pathogens that might be there are going to be inactivated by, by heat. The other onions used at McDonald's are uh, the dehydrated onions, which have been processed. Those are safe. The ones used on the quarter pounder are, are raw. And since those don't go through any heat process, they tend to be at a higher risk. The McDonald's E. coli outbreak has led to at least one death in 75 cases across 13 states. But the quarter pounder is returning to menus at the affected restaurants, though without the onions, after testing showed the beef is safe to eat. Our pet vet on call next. Up next on the CBS Evening News, see the inflatable jack-o'-lantern that stopped traffic on the road and the police officer who kept drivers safe. Then on KOAM News at 6, we're going to talk with some of the Oklahomans who participated in this first day of in-person early voting in the state. Plus, we're going to look at election security efforts in the area. And uh, NEO a and in Miami celebrates the opening of a new nursing simulation lab with a ribbon cutting and open house. Stay with us, CBS Evening News, then KOAM News at 6. Any dog lover knows that dogs love treats, but you don't want them to come with tricks. Brings us to today's question for our pet vet on call. Is any Halloween candy safe for dogs? Safe, yes. Good for, no. Halloween candy, any candy, it's all full of processed sugars and high fructose corn syrups and additives and, and color dyes. It's not good for anybody. However, it is awful good. And a little bit is okay because dogs have evolved to be able to eat almost everything that we do. The things you want to stay away from are chocolate. Everybody knows by now chocolate's bad for dogs and sugar free candy because a lot of times it's sweetened with xylitol and that is very toxic. Be careful. No, we invite questions from anyone. If you have a question, you just send it to PetVet at KOAMTV.com. Dr. Eva Dudek from the Parsons Pet Hospital answers a different question or brings us a fun fact every Wednesday here on KOAM News at 5. All right, let's check out our picks of the litter for the week. From the Joplin Humane Society, we've chosen this white as a ghost Labrador retriever mix. He's a one to two year old male. The society says he would benefit from an active family with plenty of space for play. His name is Geo. And from the Southeast Kansas Humane Society on this day before Halloween, we've chosen, of course, a black cat. It's a five-year-old domestic short hair, a female. Her name is Delilah. If you're looking for a pet, why not check out your local Humane Society? We've been needing rain. We've been hoping for rain. We're going to get some rain. Yeah, everybody should get some rain tonight, which is great news. Look at the line of showers and thunderstorms still just west of our uh, western counties. These will start to work in over about the next hour. The metro is probably going to be closer to 9 to 10 p.m. We do have a severe threat with these. Main threat is going to be gusty winds, but we also have an elevated tornado threat, so we want to watch that. A lot of times within these lines, we get those little small spin-up tornadoes. Mm -hmm. We don't want those. We do want the rain. We don't want severe weather, but uh, pay attention. I know you'll keep us informed mm -hmm. as necessary. Thanks for joining us. CBS Evening News is next. Of course, we're going to be right back here at 6 o'clock. Let's make it a great evening.